Hi everybody, as you see here, I'm going to talk about the cross-section of the brainstem. So, uh, in my previous video, I showed you a cross-section at the level of the caudal part of the medulla oblongata. Now, I'm going to focus on the uh, uh, second level, a little bit higher than the previous level. So, please watch the previous video because I explained the details about the introduction of the external features of the brain stem, ascending, descending tracts, and also I had an introduction or revision about the nuclei. So please, before watching this video, watch the previous video and then watch this one. So I'm going to give you an overview. This is a cross section of the brain. So you can see the right hemisphere, right, left hemisphere, some basal ganglia, nuclear, thalamus, in the middle, you can see the brain stem. At the back of the brain stem, you can find this blue structure is the cerebellum. And down here, we have the uh, spinal cord. So brain stem is comprised of at the top midbrain. This bulge area is the pons. And uh, down here, we have the medulla oblongata. In the posterior view, in the medulla oblongata, uh, the caudal part of the medulla oblongata, we have central canal, which is continuous which continues down as the central canal of the spinal cord and it continues up and expands, make a fourth ventricle. So medulla oblongata has two parts, open part and closed part. The closed part means the caudal part, which contains the central canal. The open part means the lower half of the, uh, the fourth ventricle. So I'm going to take a cross section through the closed part, this area, which is which is still in the in the uh, in the central canal. So if I take a cross section at this level, at the center we have central canal. So anteriorly, you can find the pyramid, two pyramid. Here we have pyramids. What do we have? Pyramid. We have cortico spinal tracts, corticospinal tracts. So it's coming from the cortex, going down, passing through the internal capsule, passing through the midbrain, and then passing through the pons and medulla oblongata, the caudal part, it's crossing and running all the way down, getting into the lateral white column. So here we have corticospinal tract, which is coming from cortex going down to the spinal cord. It's a descending tract, it's a motor tract, and it's landing here at the lateral white column of the spinal cord. What else? So you should ask yourself about the space. When you are taking cross section, you should ask yourself some questions. Which space we are? We are we are at the central canal. Which descending tracts? Descending tracts we have. We have corticospinal or pyramid into the pyramid. And what about the ascending tracts? So we have plenty of ascending tracts. If you look at the, this cross section at the posterior area, so the lateral area, here lateral column tract, we have spinothalamic tract, and here we also have spinocerebellar tract. So they are coming from spinal cord going up and carrying the sensory information to the thalamus and to the cerebellum. So at this level, you can find spinocerebellar tract here, Spinocerebellar, it's carrying the unconscious proprioceptive from the joints and muscles to the cerebellum. It's about getting into the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncles. So if you look at here, you can find the brain stem. This is the mid sagittal section. And this is the brain stem. At the back of the brain stem, here is the cerebellum. Here is the medulla oblongata, central canal. And this is the fourth ventricle. So I'm taking a cross section through this part, the rostral part of the central canal. So 
uh, spinocerebellar coming from the spinal cord, going up and passing through the inferior cerebellar peduncles, getting into the cerebellum. So it's just here in comparison to the previous uh, video and previous section at this level, it goes back because it's about to getting into the cerebellum at the back. What else? We have spinothalamic. You can find spinothalamic here. Spinothalamic. Spinothalamic coming from spinal cord, carrying the sensor information like pain and temperature from the body except the head and face, getting into the thalamus like this. It goes up. So you can find it here at the lateral column of the spinal cord, the lateral side of this uh, cross section of the medulla oblongata. And what else? We have dorsal column tracts. Medially we have gracile tract, laterally we have cuneate tract. So they are carrying the um, conscious proprioceptive uh, tactile and uh, or fine touch from the lower limb and upper limb and going up and passing through the medulla oblongata to getting into the gracile and cuneate nuclei. So at this level, the rostral part of the closed part of the medulla oblongata, we have two nuclei, gracile medially, cuneate laterally. So here we have gracile nucleus, laterally you can find cuneate nucleus, again on the other side gracile nucleus, cuneate nucleus. At the back of this nuclei we have respecting tract, cuneate tract, gracile tract, and on the other side we have the same so what will happen, hopefully you remember that the gracile and cuneate, imagine that this is the first order neuron, you know we have three order neurons, they are sensory, they are carrying the sensory information from the skin, muscles, joints, getting into the tracts and then it goes up like this, and getting into the nuclei. So when they get into the nuclei, what's going on? They are getting into the nuclei and synapsing onto the cell body of the second order neuron, which is within the cuneate and gracile nuclei and then their axon coming out and crossing from one side to the other side so sensory decussation will happen here like this it is called sensory decussation so before decussation it is known as the internal arcuate fiber. After decussation, they make medial lemniscus, medial lemniscus. So that's why this cross section is known as the sensory decussation. Sensory decussation. So if you watched previous video, we have a decussation, we have a decussation here, it's called motor decussation, corticospinal tracts, most of the fiber decussating at the level of the caudal part of the uh, medulla oblongata. And now we have another decussation, it's called sensory decussation. So second order neuron, axon, make a medial lemniscus and medial lemniscus goes up. This is the medial lemniscus and getting into the thalamus and synopsis onto the third order neuron here. And then third order neuron goes up to the sensory nuclei. 
sensory, somat sensory cortex. So now I'm going to focus on the nuclei. So this is the brain stem. Down here we have the metal oblongata. Cranial nerve 9, 10, 11, 12, four last cranial nerves are related to the medulla oblongata. On the lateral side, you can see cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal, 10, vagus, 11, accessory. And anteriorly, between the olive and pyramid, you can see the hypoglossal cranial nerve 12. So the nuclei related to these uh, cranial nerves are packed into the medulla oblongata. I'm going to show you on the posterior view these uh, nuclei related to the cranial nerves uh, 9 to 11. 9 to 12. So if you look at here closely, we have just in the midline, we have hypoglossal nucleus, cranial nerve 12. A little bit lateral to this, we have DMX, dorsal motor nucleus of vagus. This chair shaped nucleus is solitary nucleus, which is sensory. And you can also see in the anterolateral part, we have another nucleus. It is called nucleus ambiguous for 9, 10, 11. It is positioned the anterolaterally, whereas the hypoglossal is a motor nucleus, it is positioned posterior medially. Nucleus ambiguous, hypoglossal, they are motor nuclei. One of them is posterior medial, the other one is anterolateral. In addition to these cranial nuclei, 9 to 12, we also have cranial nerve 5, sensory nucleus, which is really, really, really long. It, you can find this on the whole length of the uh, brain stem. You can see here, this is the trigeminal nucleus, sensory nucleus of trigeminal. It's called spinal part, spinal, because it's coming from the rostral part of the spinal cord. Spinal trigeminal nucleus. So if you take a cross section through the caudal part, you should only see just the spinal trigeminal nucleus. We have different nuclei. We have motor nucleus, sensory nucleus, and parasympathetic nucleus. And motor nuclei are subdivided into two, par two parts, posterior medial, anterolateral. So posterior medially, at this level, here we have hypoglossal nuclei, cranial nerve 12. They are just next to the central canal. So they are positioned at the posterior and medial, just next to the central canal. And it is called hypoglossal nucleus, which is related to the hypoglossal nerve and supplying the tongue muscles. And anterolaterally, here we have nucleus ambiguous, nucleus ambiguous, which contains uh, the cell body related to the cranial nerve 9, 10, and 11, and they are supplying the uh, muscles of the pharynx, larynx, and soft palate, which are related to the speaking and swallowing. Nucleus ambiguous, 9, 10, 11. So it's anterolateral motor nucleus, hypoglossal is postural, medial motor nucleus. What about the um, parasympathetic. Parasympathetic is just next to the hypoglossal nucleus here. We have DMX. DMX. D is dorsal. M is motor nucleus. X is vagus. Cranial nerve 10. So it's a parasympathetic cranial nerve 10 and it's related to the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, and it's supplying the um, heart, lung, and the smooth muscles of the uh, gut. And now I'm gonna show you the sensory nuclei. Sensory nuclei are positioned a little bit lateral and posterior. So just next to the cranial nerve 10, here we have solitary, solitary nuclei, Solitary nuclei, it has, it's a chair-shaped nucleus, as I showed you before. At the top, it's related to the taste. So it's carrying the taste from, it's a special sensory from the tongue. It's related to the five, 
not five, so it's seven, nine, and ten. And also the caudal part is related to the visceral reflexes. So solitary is sensory. We also have an important solitary nucleus. It's the most lateral. It's here. It's trigeminal. Spinal, trigeminal, nucleus, and tract. This is a tract. It's a little bit more posterior and lateral. So I showed you the space, the descending tracts, the ascending tracts, and the nuclei. I also showed you how sensory decussation will happen at this level. And so you should compare this video to that video which was about the caudal part of the medulla oblongata. Thank you.